So you wanna be a software engineer, but don't really know where to start. I have a couple of tips that I've learned on my way up that might help you get in. How's it going guys? Joel here with another video. I go by the name of Joxel. It's been a long time since I've made a video, but I'm trying to force myself to get back into it. I've been really moved by a lot of the comments I've been receiving on my previous videos. Some people have been telling me that I've had a significant impact in their lives. I've really helped their decision making process and I provide a lot of information that was really helpful for them when it came to making decisions about getting into the software industry, switching careers, joining a coding bootcamp, you name it. Personally, I feel like it's really reignited my passion for videography, but also in trying to provide value and teach people things uh, because that's something that I feel like I sought so much growing up myself and just looking for anybody willing to share their secrets, their information, things that they've learned coming up to be able to alleviate um, a lot of the pitfalls or avoid a lot of the setbacks that people often experience you know, on their journey to success. Um, so it just really makes me happy to feel like I'm actually helping people and providing people with like valuable information and content. Um, with that being said, I'm trying to force myself to continue making videos. Um, I wish my production quality was a little bit better, but I'm working on that. Um, I'm literally doing, this video is just proof to myself that, hey, despite any situation, you, you have the ability to make content. I have a decent camera. I don't have really good lighting. I'm using some lamps right now, but Regardless of the fact, this is me making a commitment to making more videos, so expect more content pretty soon. Especially since a lot of you people have been reaching out to my email and my Instagram, DMing me, asking about when I was gonna make my next video and commenting on my video. So anyways, here I am. Let's, let's get back to the video. So you wanna join the software engineering industry and you don't really know where to start. I have some information that I think would be helpful because I had a lot of questions coming into the industry. Um, like whether I needed a degree or not, whether a boot camp was worth it, should I, how much experience do I need? Do I, should I listen to a recruiter, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, basically what I wanna do is give you some information about my experience getting into the industry from start to finish. Um, not finish, but from start to present. And hopefully that gives you some insight as to what you can do for yourself. So what I would like to do first is I wanna give you some information about me and my background. Um, if you haven't watched my previous videos, um, I have a couple of videos about coding boot camps and everything. Um, essentially, out of high school, I did a couple of years of technical college or community college um, at York Tech. I took a couple of gen ed courses. Uh, the idea was to do two years at this community college because it was cheap and I had a scholarship that made the price pr pretty much nothing. Um, and then to take those credits and transfer to a bigger college like the UNC Charlotte or something similar uh, to complete a bachelor's degree. That was my original uh, plan, but things didn't really work out according to plan. Um, I am very much a glutton for punishment. So I was working two jobs in high school and then two jobs into college. And um, I had some issues with scheduling from a guidance counselor that wasn't really doing their job that well. And essentially, um, I ended up losing one of my scholarships because of a lack of GPA and a rush to try and fix that lack of GPA. Long story short, uh, I ended up dropping out after my second year. Um, I was going to transfer to UNCC, did um, I got accepted and everything, but they wouldn't let me directly declare my major at that point. They wanted me to basically boost my GPA up one point and to take a full semester of classes in order to do so, which I thought was kind of dumb. Um, so at that point, I was like, yeah, screw this. I don't want to waste the money because I'm going to have to pull out loans for UNCC anyway. Uh, I'm going to figure something else out. Not too long later, um, after a few months, I was already living my own, had my own apartment with my friend. and. Um, I ended up seeing a bunch of ads for the UNCC coding bootcamp. I decided to do some research on the coding bootcamp and see like some reviews. It was still fairly new to Charlotte at the time. And I think that was like the only their second or third year running. So they didn't have a lot of reviews out, but the reviews that I did found from previous graduates were all fairly positive. I didn't see any big red flags. And I did re research on boot camps as a whole as an alternative to college education to see if they were uh, looked down upon or didn't have way, you know, hold nearly as much value or even worth or were worth investing in. Essentially, after doing some research, I decided that I wanted to take the chance and invest in myself uh, in this alternate route. So I decided to enroll for the full stack web development boot camp at UNCC. It was considered a continuing ed course, so it didn't qualify for financial aid. So I ended up having to take out my own loan. I took out a Sally Mae loan for it. This particular course cost me about 10 grand. There are some courses that are cheaper and there are some courses that are significantly more expensive. Um, but for me, that was the one that was available and local to me and something that fit my schedule. When it comes to taking the coding bootcamp, they, offer, they often offer two different pathways, usually a part-time course and a full-time course. The full-time course was only three months long, while the part-time was twice that, being at six months. 
and I didn't want to take any more time than I needed. I felt like I had the, the discipline and the perseverance to push through the faster course um, despite its workload and despite my current work schedule. At the time, I was working for a cell phone retailer um, and I went from full time and switched my schedule down to part time so that way I could accommodate the course. Uh, luckily, I had a manager who was uh, really cool with supporting me um, in my decision and worked around my schedule. Typically, I had to work you know, the closing shifts and because I worked pretty short hours, about four to five hours a day, um, I didn't really have any days I could have off to meet my, obviously like my minimum requirements to pay rent and stuff. So um, I ended up taking the full-time course of three months uh, with a part-time job, which I do not recommend. The boot camp, most boot camps do not recommend working at all while you're taking it, and all of them don't recommend working at all with the full-time program, let alone the part-time. Um, so I can do it. I'm not saying that you can't do it. If I did it, there's plenty of people out there who can do it. I'm just saying that it will significantly make your life harder. <clears throat> Anyways, after taking the coding boot camp, I graduated and about four months later, I landed my current job as a full stack web developer. So looking back, here are some tips that I think I've gained that can help you get your way into the industry. So the first thing I wanna recommend anybody to do who's interested in joining the software industry uh, is do some research. And of course, that's like basic, like, you know, duh, do research, read about software. But when I say research, there's a couple of things that I think were really valuable that helped me land the position that I'm at now when it came to like researching the software industry. Okay, so for one, the software engineering industry has a lot of different subfields within the industry. Um, you don't just do one thing. I mean, when it comes to coding or development, you know, you have your front end developers, your back end developers, you have full stack developers, you have DevOps, you have deployments, you have you have a lot of different people who do who wear different hats depending on the company you go to. Some companies have all the positions, some companies have one position. It just kind of depends on what you're looking to get into and what each company requires for their business that's going to determine what information is relevant to fulfilling that position. Um, so one thing I recommend doing is researching the different fields within the software industry and determine what you think might be the most interesting or relevant to you. Um, a lot of it's going to deal with coding in some sense. Usually the biggest difference is what programming languages you're going to be using. Um, you have languages that are more catered to the front end. You have languages that are catered to the back end. The more popular front end languages include JavaScript and TypeScript. And when it comes to back end languages, you have anything from C++ to C Sharp to Python to, it really just depends, Java. There are plenty of different languages that are used by many different companies and many different subgenres within the uh, software industry. So I highly recommend doing some research about the different positions that can be fulfilled within the software industry as a whole um, and kind of decide which one speaks to you the most that you may want to have, the, that you may have the most interest in and to want to lean towards. The second tip I'd recommend is start coding. Find a language that relates closely to the subfield of the software industry that you have the most interest in. If you have to rank your industry list by one through 10 or whatever, um, and decide which one you want to have the most interest in, find a language that meets your top interests and start practicing. You got a lot of free resources out there between YouTube, between Free Code Camp, between people online. There's a lot of resources out there that will allow you to get your basics and fundamentals and principles down when it comes to coding. If you're really serious about getting into the software industry, this is a great way to start and a great way to make your life easier going down or going forward. The thing about practicing alone, it requires two things, discipline and motivation. Discipline is really important because you gotta stick with it. If you wanna get good or get into the industry quickly, you gotta be disciplined enough to be able to practice on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis, however fast you wanna go is up to you. But you gotta be disciplined and being consistent. When it comes to motivation, obviously it requires you to stay motivated to want to join this industry and to be able to motivate yourself to be disciplined enough to make sure you're practicing and developing your skills along the way. If you're somebody who likes to work on the things that people see and interact with every day, the front end of things, you want to be a front end developer. Front end developers work on web pages, software, anything that requires a user interface that people actually interact with. This is where humans and computers actually meet. That is what everybody sees it's important for you to have JavaScript down. I'm not even gonna waste time listening to any other languages because if you don't have JavaScript, and I mean vanilla JavaScript, down packed and understood, at least fundamentally, is you're gonna be wasting your time. 
JavaScript is the leading front end language right now because so many other frameworks and other languages are built on top of that. When it comes to frameworks, you have frameworks that are basically packaged pieces of JavaScript that allow you to do certain things easier. The good examples of this are React.js, Vue.js, AngularJS, and so on and so forth. You got plenty of new technologies that will come out as years go on, and it's important to stay up to date as to what's new and what's trending. When it comes to the back end, the back end developers are people who work on the foundation of things. If I had to describe software like a house, front end developers work on the things that you see. So the paints, the rugs, the flooring, the countertops, the appliances, the things that you interact with, that's what a front end developer typically works on. Back end developers work on, the, work on the more structural things. This include the foundation, HVAC, plumbing, the things that are necessities and required for a house to function the way you expect, but don't really see how you know, intricate they are. Back end developers work on servers, they work on back end services, um, and the things that happen behind the scenes. If you think you're somebody who's more interested in the um, overview or architectural side of software engineering, the backend development channel might be something you're more interested in going down. As a backend developer, it is so common to see languages like C++, Java, C Sharp especially. These languages are typically more object oriented and have a lot more principles and design patterns that are important for you to understand if you want to be good at them. One thing to take note of, if you decide to go down the path of using a boot camp as your means of an education, you may not learn a lot of the fundamental principles and design patterns that are important in the actual enterprise industry. As somebody who is a boot camp graduate, I landed my first job eight months ago or nine months ago. Basically, I came in thinking I was going to work primarily on the front end dealing with React and JavaScript, despite my title being full stack web developer. Now, what is a full stack web developer? Full stack web developers are, they're more, it's more of a buzzword than anything. It really just depends on the company that you work at and how they define full stack web development. But essentially a full stack web developer is somebody who touches the front end and the back end. They work on the client facing side. They also work on the server side and the services and the back end stuff that you don't see. Um, they're somebody who is typically valuable to a company because they wear more hats and get paid one salary versus two. Depending on what company you decide you take the interest in, they may separate their teams as a lot of companies do. So it really comes down to what position you're trying to chase. Uh, but as a full stack web developer, I came into the game knowing only React and JavaScript and things I learned in my coding bootcamp. I didn't really learn a lot of C Sharp, which is what my company currently uses for their backend services. So C Sharp took a lot of learning for me, a lot of off time learning and researching, teaching myself C Sharp, so that way I was able to hit the ground running and be ready to start some projects with my coworkers and working on solving problems for the, for the company. If you wanna learn more about other software languages and the difference between front end versus back end or anything in between, let me know in a comment section below and I'll consider making another video that goes into more detail about that. Now, the next tip that I have for you is decide if an education is worth investing in. There are some people out there who believe you have to have a degree in computer science to be able to land a tech job or become a programmer, but this isn't true. Um, I did it without a degree um, and anybody can do it without a degree. Now, that's not to say that getting a degree isn't worth your time or investment. There's one thing that is super valuable when it comes to getting a computer science degree, and that's learning a lot of the theories, the fundamentals, and the design principles behind coding in a lot of languages. Um, that's something that is invaluable when it comes to actually working in an enterprise company, um, that, and it's something that's super useful down the line. The reason why you need to decide what's best for you is because everybody's situation is different. You may not have the income to be able to afford paying for college or paying for a boot camp. You may be able to go to college but don't know if it's worth your time. You may want to take the longer route and go through college. You may want to take a faster route and just teach yourself everything. It all depends on your situation and ultimately you have to decide that for yourself. Now, things that you can do to help give some information and help you make that decision is do some research on the couple of options. There are three main routes you can take when it comes to joining the software industry. You can either go to college and get a degree, get your bachelor's, get your master's, do whatever you wanna do, um, and then can start applying for jobs. The second thing you can do is take a boot camp. Typically, there are a lot of companies that offer boot camps. They're usually done through private institutions. Um, sometimes they're paired with college campuses, but they're usually not provided by a college, but everybody's situation varies. They usually charge a separate fee. Um, they typically not eligible for my financial aid because they're often considered continuing education courses. So you're gonna have to pay out of pocket for this, whether that's through a loan or through your own money. When it comes to doing a boot camp, 
Boot camps are fast track ways to get certified to work in the industry. So they're gonna teach you a lot of information in a very short amount of time, usually between three to six months, depending on your program. Now, that means two things. One, you have a really heavy workload that you're gonna to have to work through. Think of all of the big technical classes you take in college and shoving them into one semester. That's what you're doing in a boot camp, essentially. Now, the second thing is, because of the heavy workload, it's gonna take a lot of perseverance. You're gonna be usually in smaller or larger cohorts that are going to shrink over time because people are gonna quit. It's hard stuff to do. Um, but another thing to keep in mind is boot camp graduates are not seen the same as college graduates. Now, this isn't the same everywhere. Some companies view graduates as equal. Some people view everybody's equal across the board. It really depends on your location and what companies are looking for in that area. But just keep in mind, generically speaking, on the average, boot camp graduates and their certificates they received are not held as, such a, as a higher regard as a college degree. But that should be expected. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna be any harder for you to find a job, uh, but it could vary depending on your location and the offers available in your area, uh, or if you decide to move, then, you know that's up to you. Now, the third and final way that you can get into the industry is teaching yourself. This is not as uncommon as people think. There are plenty of success stories of people who started young, started old, and just basically just started learning themselves by watching videos, reading articles, reading blogs, buying books, and just really crushing it in terms of discipline and teaching themselves and developing their skills when it comes to working with software. If you prove that you can do the work, nine times out of 10, that's what companies wanna know. The harder part is getting the opportunity to prove you can do the work, and that's where like you can get into like resume optimization and all that other stuff um, because a lot of people, a lot of companies are gonna filter out uh, certain applicants depending on their credentials, being through higher education and whatnot. Uh, but when it comes to like facing person to person, anybody's gonna choose somebody who shows they know principles, they know the fundamentals, and they can get a job done and really think through a problem. Um, so that's really important. You have to decide which route is going to work best for you when it comes to money, when it comes to scheduling, when it comes to discipline. Are you somebody who can hold yourself accountable or do you need the structure of a boot camp or a college education to be able to provide you with that extra umph to you know, manage your time? That's something you have to decide. But all three routes are viable for getting in the industry. Again, I took the boot camp route. I've known some people who've taught themselves and I know some people who've gotten degrees. It's all about your ambition and what you wanna do for yourself. My fourth tip for you, this may seem pretty obvious, is once you're confident enough, start interviewing. Now, I say that with the asterisks. What I mean by when you're confident enough is when you feel like you've gotten a, a good, a decent grasp on a language, you feel like you can build small projects, you got a portfolio under your belt, you've done some research, and you can kind of talk your way through a conversation about technology. That's typically when you're confident enough. When it comes to the interviewing process, depending on what company you're applying for, you may go through a recruiter, you may go through an in-house you know, hiring manager, it all kind of depends, and you may end up taking a code test. Now, what's a code test? A code test is typically uh, some type of test that a company will give you to test your aptitude when it comes to obviously performing a task they're gonna expect you to do. Now, typically these code tests have nothing to do with the work you're gonna end up doing, uh, at least in my experience. But essentially a code test is what people, companies are gonna to use to test your aptitude when it comes to um, completing a task or creating a program or you know a web application or whatever the case may be, depending on what your job position is hiring for. Some companies require code tests, some have multiple steps in their interviews, um, and some are straightforward like any other job. Um, for me, I applied to over 170 different jobs and within my four months between graduating and landing my current job, but I only landed like four interviews. Two of them I got past the code test and into a technical interview. One of them I failed the code test and didn't obviously couldn't make it. Um, and my last one was the one that I actually, you know, obviously passed, hence the job that I got now. Um, but that's something to expect. The reason why you have to build your confidence is in this industry, there is not a lot of validation. A lot of the validation has to come from self. Granted, that's not the case everywhere. There are some bosses who are great. There are some teams who are really supportive, but I'm going to tell you just straight up, just being real, when it comes to this industry, there's, you're gonna be banging your head against a wall a lot. And you're gonna be telling yourself that you may not feel good enough, that you don't know if you're gonna be an imposter, it's called imposter syndrome, that you may not live up to your expectations, but you gotta push through that because the number one thing is confidence. If you don't have the confidence, you're not gonna push yourself to the limits and keep yourself motivated enough to keep your skills sharp and to stay productive. It's really important that you practice telling yourself you can do it and taking risk. That's how you build character is taking risk. 
And that's how you're gonna build, build your experience with interviews, is taking risk in these interviews. Interview at places that you know that you may not be qualified for. Believe it or not, a lot of jobs are hiring for people expecting to train them. Now, this is not the case everywhere. If you got a lot of fast like places, um, like marketing companies or consulting companies uh, that expect you to hit the ground running, they might not expect you to do a lot of training. But in my case, I applied for uh, my position that expected me to know C Sharp. I did not know C Sharp. I wrote one line of C Sharp code for a Discord bot and that didn't even work out that well. Um, I was more so fluent in JavaScript and JavaScript frameworks and HTML, GCSS, you know, more front end stuff. Um, but I was able to talk my way through my code tests, show I knew how to think through decisions and talk through my decision making process and how I problem solved. That is what landed me this job. And from there, I've now learned C Sharp. I'm now very comfortable in C Sharp after the eight to nine months that I've been working here. So I say all that to say, don't be afraid to interview even if you don't feel 100% confident in the languages that are required or the requirements in general, because a lot of times you just gotta be able to talk through solving problems and show that you're ambitious and, and driven enough to learn. The biggest thing is to show that you're willing to learn on your own and not have somebody hold your hand through the process because software industry is not about hand holding. There's no daycare. There's no crying to your boss about a deadline you couldn't meet. I say this with a cringe is very binary, no pun intended. Very binary, it's either black or white. You can do it or you can. Um, and there's no shame in that. In my team, we live by the mantra that you are not your code. Even if your code sucks, it doesn't mean that you suck as a person. But it's important that you continue to try and to persevere and always try and sharpen your skill set because that's something that's gonna be valuable for you when it comes to joining the industry or transitioning throughout it. Anyways, that's all for this video. I really hope that I was able to give you some good information and provide you a little bit of insight as to my experience getting into the industry um, and hopefully provide you with some information that might help you in your decision making process, your research, um, and ultimately like deciding what your goals and what path you're gonna go down if you decide you really wanna join software. It's a great industry, it pays well, and it offers a lot of flexibility. All you gotta do is want it and you can do it. Anyways, Thank you for watching. If you like my content, please subscribe. It really helps me out. Leave a like, comment. Please comment. I love reading you guys' comments. You know, if there's anything I can do to help, feel free to reach out, email me, DM me, whatever. I try to reply to most of the comments or most of the DMs I receive. If you guys don't know, my personal Instagram is at joxel7. Uh, feel free to reach out, follow, DM me, whatever. Um, and I'd be happy to answer any questions or provide any more insight. Let me know what kind of videos you guys wanna see. For those of you who follow my content and really want some more information, just shoot me ideas of topics and stuff that you want to know, and I will be happy to make videos um, about that topic. That's something I'm really trying to do more is be more consistent in making these. So, so that's something I look forward to doing. But anyways, again, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.